Greetings Petroheads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Today I'm going to be introducing the new 2015 AMW Eagle. Um, we have looked at it before, like the, the older one. And basically what is new on this, uh, on, on this one? So first of all we are using a different body shell, which is one of the major changes because we are using something a little bit more modern that you can easily also turn into a convertible one and whatnot. Um, if it would just load, that would be, that would be great. Uh, good, so this is the, the body shot. I don't mind the lipstick that normally goes all the way, but the loading is a little bit bugged. Anyway, we got the same versions as before, before you could say. Um, a six cylinder and an and an eight cylinder all turbocharged and uh, both available with eco fun that's basically a halfway and then sport trims and also um, those are also available with re either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive chassis as before glued aluminium a monocoque and then we got aluminium panels that will respond front suspension more to link rear suspension don't mind this oh actually this is this is totally fine um but there have been some slight changes as far as the suspension options go because i remember that the suspension used to be all the same for you know eco fun and sport for the six cylinder engines whereas you know, Eco is now a little bit more on the comfort side, Sport is a little bit more on the sport side, and Fun is somewhere in between, just like it should be, you know, logically speaking. And also the six-cylinder Fun engine has been slightly retuned to be a little bit more economical, a little, but with also a little bit better of a torque curve, and I think it's even making slightly more power too. No, the same 240 horsepower, but the, it's, it's got a nicer torque curve, slightly better economy than before, and, you know, all the good stuff. So, um, basically, six-speed uh, manual is still the, still, the, still the standard option here, and we got, I think, 16-inch rims as standard. The fun is not supposed to have 17s. Um, the sport, the sport has 17s though. And also, I I have rebuilt this. I have rebuilt and I have built a new eagle because the old sport six version was featured in a car magazine on the automation forum done by Utopian 201, and it was up against two other coupes of this category and it was actually really good it, it won the three car comparison it, given the fact that it was only three cars i'm still happy that i won but i'm not too proud of it but the, the but what makes me kind of proud is the very positive feedback it got for basically all of its setup and therefore i tried to build on that but also improve it here you can see the the Eagle HP, which was the first uh, trim I made for the new generation Eagle, which is why this is the the um, the trim that you see when you w when I go to the model and go to the you know what's it called the the original trim basically. So this is the Sport 6, this is the new Sport 6 basically, and if we go here you can see that we got 48.4 drivability, 50 sportiness, 43.5 comfort, which is not too bad at all, then prestige is 28.5 and safety is 57.9. Anyway, acceleration is like before, 5.2 seconds. We are getting even more, even a little bit more cornering down low than than before uh, the top speed is slightly lower because i think of the aerodynamics here or because of the gearing 
274. We should be. Tell you what, if we put a little bit in here, I don't tell us very much. But in it, it's probably down to the aero, down to the aerodynamics of this body shell. The economy is still pretty good. 7.75 liters per 100 kilometers is actually, considering this is a 275 horsepower car, it's not bad at all. If we compare the stats of the new Sport 6 to the ones of the old Sport 6, wait, can we get both on the screen at once? So there's the new Sport 48. 50, 44, 28, 58. And there's the old one, 46, so less drivable, 52, a little bit more sporty. Comfort is down, prestige is basically the same, and safety is also basically the same. So we made the new Sport 6 a little bit more drivable, slightly less sporty. Um, wait, what about the weight of it? They should be pretty much the same. Uh, weight of the Sport 6, 1353, 1341, so it is also a little bit lighter than the old one. And the big difference is that we sold the old and the old car because there was no market when I, when I built it. Because there, uh, there was no guideline to tell me what kind of price uh, I would be selling this for. And for that reason, you can see that I adjusted it in such a way that we would be at about 35,000 for this car now. And that is a pretty sweet value proposition if you ask me. Because in Austria, a Toyota GT86 is 38,000 euros. So this would be cheaper than, than, the, than a Toyota. And also, it would be more potent and more economical. Probably not more reliable. 71.2 is, is, is a good value here. But still the Toyota engines are probably even more reliable. But it's, I mean, we're, we're complaining on a pretty high level here. So this is basically your competitor for, uh, say, a Nissan 350Z or some, uh, 370Z, excuse me. Um, but with, I think, a little bit more potency, and just something that not not everyone has. Obviously, the, the small sports coupes are kind of a niche market uh, already, given you know how many of those do you see in the road compared to like Opel Corsas, Volkswagen Golfs, and all that stuff. You don't see very many of them. At least here in Austria. Like a Nissan free, uh, 370Z is, a, is an absolute rarity. You you see more Porsches than that, and you see more Ferraris, even though you know barely. But what the point I'm trying to make is the only small sports coupe you really see here in 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 Austria is the the Audi TT from time to time. But overall, this is a car market that is still pretty. Pretty rare, uh, like it's 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 a niche that has a lot of room for improvement, and this is where this car uh, would like to come in. The Sport 6 in particular, with its 17-inch rims, with its 5.2-second acceleration time, with its agile handling, and the, just the, the pull from the turbocharged six-cylinder engine, this would be a great competitor for. Cars, uh, the, the cars I mentioned, especially the Audi TT. Interior-wise, I, I didn't show that tab yet, did I? Um, Interior-wise, we have four seats with a premium interior and then standard infotainment. Now, standard, as I think I've explained before, means quite a lot, actually, in, in the 2010s. Standard would mean you would get a kind of like an, a tablet-like um, touchscreen device, I don't know how to explain it, uh, how to put it in proper words, but it would control the, uh, the it, w it would feature satellite navigation and it would also control the, uh, the climate control and the, and the radio, so you would have no external 
devices, everything would be controlled via that unit. And that saves space, which you can use, uh, which we use for, you know, additional compartments where you can put stuff and whatnot, or just obviously that, that uh, control unit will also have USB, AUX ports and all the, all that stuff. So you can charge your phone while you're driving and put it into the compartment right underneath that device. So it's all logically thought out in theory already. The only problem is it doesn't exist in real life. I, I am not making this car currently in real life, sadly. But um, the point that uh, the point is, it's all thought out and, it, and it's a little bit simpler on the interior. It's easier to use. And with a, a drivability of 48.4, it's also quite easy to drive really for a sports car but it wait the old the old car that this f and um, that this automation track in 229 if i'm not mistaken so what does this do 220 well <laughs> basically the same performance but keep in mind that the that the time of the old car was also in the old build in the old game build so we'll go back here and see what time it does now yeah this is a little bit more aerodynamic than the uh, of a shape than the new car but that is fine this does oh it's actually a little bit slower than the new one so the extra sportiness does not really do anything for this old model which is good for advertising the new one right and of course there's also another HP version that engine hasn't changed it is still the 6 liter naturally aspirated 700 horsepower V8 but what has changed is that the is that this now is all-wheel drive as standard and you can also opt for rear-wheel drive but all-wheel drive is standard because you see this performance right here 2.8 seconds from 0 to 100 times an hour quarter mile well indicated 10.5 but it is actually faster and how much is it real and how fast is it really Ten point three. Awesome. Ten point three puts this into hypercar territory, and you can see here that the only penalty this really has is the desirability penalty for using an older body shell. But then again, we don't have a modern small coupe body shell. The only modern coupe body shells we have is the Corvette one, which is already too too large for uh, what kind of car I intend this to be. And then we have the modern muscle car body shell, which is just <laughs> uh, what 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 appears to be almost twice as large as this. And um, needless to say, that's too too large too. But in any case, the only thing that is kind of a little bit worrying to me here is the weight of sixteen hundred and fifty three kilograms. Then again, we have a six liter V8, we have all good drive, we have premium interior. So, you know, and we don't have carbon fiber chassis or panels. This is something I would like to address. If uh, devs, if you're watching this, please make it so if you have a family, if, if you have a model that you, that you would be able to change the materials of at least the panels for different trims. So if you, for example, look at the BMW 3 or 4 series. They have just, I think, standard on those is aluminium. But then when they make the M3 or M4, then some, some parts are made from, you know, composite, carbon, or just different material combinations and whatnot. They change materials too, even though it's basically built on the same platform. So why, why wouldn't we be able to do that? And that's been, that's not only a thing for this particular generation of BMW 3 and 4 series it's been it's been that way for decades so it would be nice to have that as an option as well also what you notice here is that the brakes are pretty small but that is entirely intentional wait why are they 
I need to make them a little bit bigger though. There we go. But um, having the having the brakes this small make it makes it so we have less weight. Even though carbon ceramic uh, ceramic brakes are already light, but um, you know you, you save weight where you can, right? And uh, the thing is, they don't give me better stopping distance if I go like up to 300 you see we actually lost we are actually slow slower on the stopping here so what was this two 260 255 maybe 255 is where it was yeah and I think that is all I wanted to say for now about this car um, I'm still not completely done with tuning all of the engines but to give you a first impression and also uh, there, there will be a naturally aspirated version of the 2.5 liter V uh, N96 available which will be the entry level model basically because you know the Eco 6 is a decent entry level uh, model then again, it's got 205 horsepower, which is, you know, if you're talking, if you're talking entry level of a small sports coupe, and that's quite a lot already for, you know, a, a, a young guy who's got a little bit of money on the on his bank account left. Um, wait, this one's gonna be like 30,000, so we reduce that. 30, 20. Okay, good. Plus ten percent. Fun premium, family sport premium, family. This is not really a family car, but fun premium is definitely one category where I'd like to score well in with with this with this um, trim. In any case, um, so the so the uh, two and a half liter naturally aspirated will be aimed to produce about a hundred and. 75 horsepower maybe something like that it'll be detuned significantly and uh, just just to give a little bit of an just to give it more reliability more uh, you know just to make it a little bit more accessible and uh, cheaper to ensure so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode leave me feedback on this car if you if you liked it or if you didn't like it Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like or a comment, and many and as many and as many suggestions as you can in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.